once again, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and children of all ages, you are now tuning into the Investor Show. As always, this is your gracious host, the Prince of Investing, Prince Dax, coming to you guys and girls live all the way from the beautiful city and state of Denver, Colorado, via the beautiful city and state of Hollywood, Hawaii. Don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And as always, I don't have a lot of time, and I definitely, you guys and girls don't have a lot of time, so we're going to jump straight into it. So the first thing that we want to do and bring up to you guys and girls is we talked about today's topic is going to be the Prince of Investment. We're going to be talking about President Biden. It's official. President Biden has won the election. He has won the Electoral College, and he's due to take over the presidency come January during his inauguration. Now to think about it, we want to talk about stocks to watch under President Biden. We don't want to be behind the curve. We want to be in front of the curve. Being behind the curve is waiting until the market hits an all-time high. Now you want to invest in December or versus March when we had the fastest stock drop of ever of all times, nobody wanted to invest. So we wanna be in front of the curve to see what is coming next. So let's talk about, so in this episode, we're gonna talk about President Biden's beliefs, beliefs, and then we're gonna talk about the president, how they affect the economy with their beliefs. And then we're gonna get into some sectors to watch. Then we're gonna talk about some stocks to watch. And then inside of those stocks to watch, I'm gonna give my, what I'm looking for, for companies and things like that or whatnot, or whatever the case may be. Something that can help you out. So y'all stay tuned. We'll have a great conversation on what's to come next. All right. So the first thing is President Biden, his belief is he wants us to, he wants us to move forward. He wants us to build infrastructure, build, replace our roads, build new, uh, you know, we see, they want to rebuild the roads, infrastructure, right? Also, he believes in pushing the envelope and getting us away from oil and using more things like green energy, you know, like things like solar panels and electronic vehicles and things like that. So he's big on that. He's big on infrastructure. He's big on uh, energy saving, renewable energy. So renewable energy is big, what he's big on. And he also is big on rebuilding our infrastructure, getting us those new roads, building new buildings, things like that. The number three thing, which is right now dominating the headlines of what's got us all into this is healthcare. Always talking about who's going to do health care, what's going to do health care, uh, having health care for the elderly. Think about it. The baby boomers are getting older and older and older, and the baby boomers are moving to things like assistant living. They need more medication. So he's talking about re-energizing uh, health care. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that kind of leads it to what sectors we're going to look at. But we have to look at why, how does the president affect the economy, right? with his policies. So for prime example, we have a great election coming up here with Congress, which is more important. We already know the House is already majority Democrat. The president is Democrat, but now you have Republicans that's in the Senate. So we have a big Senate vote that's coming up here in January, which I think it will probably remain Senate strong, but if it does flip to Democrat, that means that President Biden can get his policies by quick and faster uh, without having to stumble through, uh, stumble through the Senate. But even when, if the Senate remains, he's still going to have major influence since he's the president and he does have the House. He's going to have a major influence in being able to push different policies that he want to, want to be seen. Now, with this being said, it comes down to money, policies and funding. So policies and funding, that's what politicians do. They affect policies and different types of policies. As we saw what happened with Uber, the government came out and said, hey, you know what? You must now classify your workers as contract, you must not classify your contractors as workers. That itself would have ruined Uber, not good for Uber at all. But in the reverse way, look what President Trump did. And I think President Biden, not President Biden, but President Obama may have started it. But we have a tax break for renewable energy. So they signed into law. If you go get solar panels on your house, and let's say the solar panels cost $10,000, we're going to reward you $5,000 just for doing it, tax breaks. So that's the number one way the government can affect can write policies to be able to give tax breaks to people that buy your product. Hey, if you turn green, you get a tax break. If you're building infrastructure for the federal government, you can get a tax break. You can get what they like to call tax credit. Remember, everybody said, why did President Trump only pay $700 in taxes? Because he really a lot of, he, re, he received a lot of tax credits to build certain infrastructures. I won't say all of them. I don't want to go deep into that, but I'm just speaking of how it works. For prime example, I'm a politician. I want a bar to come to my city or I want to re-energize my city. I'm to incentivize people to move to my city. I may give them a tax credit 
on local taxes. I may give them a tax credit on the water. Like, hey, if you use water in my city, the city controls water, the city controls local taxes, we can give you a tax break if you bring your business to my city. So local government does it all the way to the federal side. But on the federal side, those are huge tax breaks. So for prime example, in renewable energy, if you get a green energy car, you can get a tax break. If you get a solar energy, if you get solar, if you take your house green, you can get a tax break. Also, they could say, hey, for infrastructure, if you, the government can start now putting out contracts, say, hey, we want to put $10 billion into rebuilding Washington, D.C., and they can do that rather easy by saying, hey, we're going to give, uh, we're going to issue a government contract to a company that can help build the infrastructure, whatever the case may be. So now companies can go, in, go on and work for the government to help build the infrastructure and whatnot. So right now, infrastructure stocks are very big. So we're talking about President Biden, how his policies can affect the economy. That's why it's so important. And this can help you get in front of the ball. So since we know he's big on infrastructure, renewable energy and healthcare and things like that, and we know we have a bunch of baby boomers that are getting older, it would be, it would behoove us to do what? It would behoove us to look at um, the, the infrastructure sector, which is consumer material, no construction materials. So let's look at the construction materials sector. Also, let's look at the renewable energy and let's look at healthcare. So the sectors we're going to zoom in on are construction material, consumer uh, renewable energy, and also healthcare, right? So now when we break those down, now we know the sectors. Now we said, well, Prince, um, it's a huge sector. There are hundreds of stocks there or whatever companies or whatever. How do we find a company to invest in? Now, there are a million ways you can do it. There are a million different type of ratios, but I'm going to give you five little simple things that you can start with when analyzing. Number one, I'm gonna look at the fundamentals of the company. You know, the, knowing the fundamentals of the companies will help me sleep at night. So uh, if I know a company has $1 billion in cash and they only have $100,000 worth of debt, I can sleep a little bit easier at night versus a company that has $1 billion in cash and $10 billion in debt that's current. That could, that's number one way, looking at those total current assets, not having to work in capital, right? So for prime example, so what I'm gonna look at, I want the company to be profitable. I want to be profitable. Number one, you got to be profitable because in this entire sector, there are plenty of companies that are profitable in infrastructure. There are plenty, um, there's plenty of money in the renewable energy sector that's already profitable. And there are plenty of healthcare companies that are already profitable. So if you're not profitable in the space, why aren't you profitable when all your brothers and sisters are profitable? And I like companies that are turning profits because when you're, uh, when you're returning profits, that can increase your retained earnings. And the more money that you retain as retained earnings, that can be a great indicator of expansion in the future. So I want to see those profitability coming in. And I want to see that retained earnings, retaining higher and higher and higher to be able to expand into the future. So that's not the only thing, but that's why profitability is so important. Number two, the debt to equity, uh, debt to equity ratio, a debt to cash. You know, how much money do you have on hand in total current assets are in cash? How much total, what's the total liabilities you have? Because, or how much debt or long-term debt you have? Because we all know it's not about how much money you make, it's how much money you keep. So if you have a high amount of cash that's coming in, but then you also have a high amount or even higher amount of debt that's going out, that affects your retained earnings. Let's walk through it. I make a million dollars a year, but then again, I spend $900,000 on to live my life. That means I'm only walking away with $100,000 in retained earnings every year versus somebody else who makes a million dollars. Somebody else can make $500,000 a year and only spend $100,000 uh, $100, and um, $100,000 or $100,000. $100, and guess what? They have $400,000 left over versus the other company only had $100,000, right? So you get that. It's not about how much you make. It's about how much you keep. And that's what you can tell by looking at the current the current liabilities and the long-term liabilities as well. And you relate that to cash. So people love to look at return on assets. People love to look at uh, working capital, which is total current assets versus total liabilities. So that's one thing, debt to equity ratio. Uh, how much cash do you have? How much debt do you have as well? I wanna see that ratio be a little uh, on the lower end to, to debt to equity. Now you gotta worry about the next thing. Now, if you have great fundamentals, there are plenty of companies out there with great fundamentals, but they just don't have that magic to move. It's a company moving. For prime example, everybody knows Coca-Cola is a great business. It's a great company. It's not going anywhere or whatnot. But you don't see Coca-Cola really take off and do big things, right? And that's for two reasons, you know. 
The number one reason it has a very low beta. And the number two reason it pays a nice dividend. So I want to look at something with a higher beta, a high beta. A beta of one means it's just as volatile as the S&P 500. I want a little spice on mine. I want you to go up a little bit higher. By going up a little bit higher, it doesn't say you're wrong. It's just saying that you have the possibility to move. I want stocks that's going to be able to move into the future. The next thing I'm looking at is what is my benchmark? Uh, if I, have a, if I have 10 stocks in my portfolio and I'm looking at adding an uh, infrastructure stock, I'm going to say, okay, well, is this stock beating the stocks that I currently hold in my portfolio? If they are, then why? Number two, are you beating the number one reason? We'll take this back to number one. Let's revert back. Number one, are you outperforming the S&P 500 index? I can do that with simple look at a chart, right? Are you outperforming the S&P 500? The reason why that is so important, because if you're not outperforming the S&P 500, if your individual stock is not outperforming the, the uh, S&P 500, which is the top 500 companies in America, then I might as well just get the top 500 companies in America. Because the likelihood that the top 500 companies in America will have a significant decline versus your individual underperforming stock is greatly different. So my first thing is, are you outperforming the S&P 500 when I place you on a chart? The next thing is I'm going to look for is I don't like companies. This is going to may sound a little crazy, but because I, I used to be very big on this, I used to be very, very big on dividends. Now I'm not as big on dividends because of my personal life. Why? Why do I need to collect a dividend that's going to be continuous, continuously repaid? Some people like dividends because um, they like the return on investment. Some people like dividends because they need a cash flow. Uh, some people have so many other reasons that they like dividends. But I noticed companies that pay a heavy dividend, like you look at your, a lot of your AT&T companies, you look at a lot of your Coca-Cola companies, uh, companies that pay heavy dividends usually don't really go that fast or high. Look at a company like Verizon, AT&T, uh, Coca-Cola. These companies don't run very fast or run very high, right? Why is that? Why they don't run very fast? Why they don't run very high? They don't run very fast, run very high because of the cash that's coming in, a lot of that is going to dividends. Look at all the airline companies that had to pay millions, that were paying millions and millions of dollars every quarter into shareholders' dividends. With me, and somebody said, hey, Prince, um, you invested $100,000 into my company. I have a dividend check of $5,000, you know, that's going to come your way. And they said, hey, I can send you this $5,000 so you can have to go buy whatever you want to buy, or I can keep this $5,000 and grow the company even more. So we're gonna turn your $100,000 investment to a million dollars or whatever the case may be. I like that. That's what I want to have. I would rather the company retain more of its earnings and expand in the future. Also by a company not paying you their dividends to a shareholder, this is a way to defer taxes. So for prime example, let's take someone who owns Coca-Cola and they earn a million dollars in dividends. Guess what? At the end of the year, when it's time to pay taxes, they're gonna to have to pay a million dollars on, you know, they're gonna pay a million dollars on the dividends that they receive. Versus take someone else who invested into Google, they didn't pay any dividends, they weren't paid any dividends, they didn't sell the stock, they just held the stock. Guess how much they're gonna owe in dividends? Zero. And on top of that, I'll probably have to tell you guys and girls, but you already know that Google probably outperformed Coca-Cola anyway. So, so, excuse me, technology companies that don't pay dividends usually grow faster and put more money in my pocket. But what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break, and I mean a very quick break, and after this break, we're going to come back, we're going to do a little review of what we already talked about, and then we're going to break it down into the actual stocks that I've seen that you can take a look at and how to find a particular stock. That's what we're going to get into after the break, how to find the exact stocks in the sectors we just named on the President Biden. But uh, we're going to take a quick break and we, and we will be right back.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and children of all ages, we are now back live on the Prince of Investment. I'm your host, Prince Dykes. I'm going to give a little review for anybody that may be uh, tuning in now or may catch it live. And so that if you, maybe if you will sleep in the beginning that you can catch live what we have now. But the first thing is that we talked about, we talked about infrastructure. We talked about, um, we talked about, well, let's get back to the very, very beginning. This whole episode is stocks to watch up under President Biden. And the stocks that we came up with uh, to watch under President Biden, we talked about why his, what his opinions were. And we said it was infrastructure, renewable energy, and healthcare. On top of that, we looked at how does the president affect uh, companies in the stock price? We love to look at the fundamentals of a company, how much money they make and things like that, right? So the, the president would be in a position and Congress would be in a position to open up the, you know, the banks. They can write government contracts. They can give tax credits. They can do all types of things to incentivize people to buy particular products. A prime example, if the government wants to fix the roads, they can allow, allocate money and move money around to give to cities and counties and states to help fix the roads. And the companies that do fix roads, that put them in a position to capitalize. So that's how the president affects the economy. The third thing that we talked about was the particular sectors. We looked into the sectors. We looked into the sectors of infrastructure, renewable energy, and healthcare. The president made it very clear that he wants to, uh, you know, uh, um, he was the vice president of Obama who created Obamacare. So he's very big on Obamacare. And the second thing is we have a lot of baby boomers that's moving right into that older age of where you're going to need more healthcare. The next thing was renewable energy. We see that renewable energy companies like Tesla is taking off. Solar panel companies are having great years. Um, so green energy is another one, an infrastructure that we already spoke about. So those are the sectors. Then we talked about inside of those sectors, what do you look for in a stock? And I said, I want profitability, low debt to income ratio, um, a high beta. Um, I'll perform the S&P 500 and that pays no dividends. They have, I want their income steadily growing, their revenue streams are steadily growing, gross profits steadily growing, retained earnings steadily, steady, steadily growing. So I'm looking for companies that are growing where, and I'm not grade, grading them by what they said or do. I'm looking at their numbers. Are their numbers increasing year over year? How does their debt look? Is their debt increasing? If it is, is gross profits increasing? So looking at their income statement, looking at that balance sheet, and also paying attention to the cash flow. So with that being said, now we said before the break, we talked about the sectors. How do we find somebody in the sector? So the first thing you can do, uh, there are plenty of ways if you have Robin Hood, not Robin Hood, I'm sorry about that. I don't know Robin Hood um, is having a crazy day today. But we're talking about if you have maybe like an E-Trade or a TD Ameritrade or maybe like a simple Google search, you can find some of the top companies in the infrastructure arena. So how do you find the top company is you can search by their market capitalization. The market capitalization is the share, how many shares are outstanding times the share price. That's going to come up with market cap. So you have mega cap mega cap, mega large companies, you have large cap companies, mid cap companies, and you have small cap companies. This is how they rank companies, how big they are, and whatever the case may be. So the thing about it is, first, I want to start with the big boy, the biggest and the baddest in the sector. Once I list out your market capitalization, are you the biggest and the baddest in the section? Now you're going to fall into, um, are you profitable? And usually the biggest and the baddest company is usually profitable, you usually have good uh, debt to equity ratio, um, then I'm looking at stock price and I'm looking at this beta and then I'm looking at how does it compare to the S&P 500 and does it pay dividends? And then if none of that happens, if all of that happens to line up, then I may go with that company. I may not go with that company. Then I may look at who else is in that sector. Who's the top three, right? Now I'm looking at the performance too. I'm looking at the performance. Who's performing what? If they are performing very well and they're doing very good and things like that, then I may go with that particular company. Now, when I look at the stocks, so first I go to the sector. I go to the sector of, let's say, infrastructure. Um, let's say for infrastructure, I may go to the construction section. Inside the construction section, I may look at construction materials. Who's selling the materials to be constructed upon, right? So when I do that research and I find, okay, boom, I pull out a list. Now I filter that list down to market cap. Now I have the market cap, I can see the big companies. Now I can do a quick search and look at the PE ratio. I look at the PE ratio and it's negative or it's zero. I know that company's unprofitable, at least within the last 12 months. Filter away. I don't want to pay attention to it. And then look at the debt to income ratio. How much cash do you have on hand? What are your total assets? What are your total liabilities? What is the ratio? 
You know, just because you have a lot of debt, do you make a lot of cash? Is your income steadily growing? Is your income growing? Are you decreasing debt over time? So I'm looking at that gross profit, right? You know, we love to get sometimes as investors, we look, oh, this company makes this much money, but I want to see how much money is the company taking home. And I can stroll all the way down on that income statement, on that balance sheet, balance sheet and I love to look at those retained earnings. And also shareholders equity. I love to look at the total assets minus the total liabilities, comes up with a network, AKA shareholders equity. The next thing is, okay, great financial fundamental company, but now does this stock even move? What is the beta? Um, if the beta is one or above, or if it's one below, what is it? You know, I want something with a little bit, a little bit of a higher beta, because if I'm right, I want the stock to move. So I'm gonna compare it to the S&P 500. Are you outperforming the S&P 500 year to date? within the last year, two years, three years, because um, I know great companies that don't move that much. So I wanna to look to see if you got a little acid on you. I can break that down. The next thing I can do is to see, are you paying a dividend? Are you paying a dividend? It's very easy to look up. You can look at dividends. And also the dividend payment is also on the, um, the cash flow statement and it's also on your income statement as well, right? So I can see how much money is being paid in dividends, even if it pays dividends. Because instead of paying, instead of sending me a check for hundred dollars or five dollars or two cent or whatever, I rather you keep that money and continue to grow the company. Because when you pay me that money, first the company, once the company made the money, they got to pay taxes. Then they pass it down to you. Then you have to pay taxes. So you're being hit with tax twice. I rather the company continue to grow, aka a company like a Tesla or a company like an Amazon. I continue. I want that company to continue to grow. I don't have to pay taxes on it, and it continues to reflecting stock price of my value as it continues to grow, that's what I wanna see. The next thing that I want to, um, and those are those are like five general things that I can see by looking in that sector. Look in the renewable energy sector. Who's there? Who's there? Who's the biggest one by market cap? What companies are moving? Are they profitable? Are they doing a debt equity ratio? And I can provide that to healthcare. So one company, let's look at an infrastructure. You have a company like Calipiller, Calipiller, Calipiller right? And I have another company that doesn't have a big name, Caterpillar. You know, when you drive down that road, you see those big uh, trucks and bulldozers and things like that on those construction sites, starting construction or whatever. That's a great deal. That's a great deal for um, Caterpillar. If we if we build infrastructure, we're probably going to need some of their machinery that they make. That's one that you look at in infrastructure. Green energy. When you look at green energy, you have companies like Enphase, and you have companies like Solar. Uh, Solar Edge that are doing very good, that have great finances and things like that. The next one is healthcare. One that I really like is Illumineer, right? I really like that one. It's a little bit on the higher end, it's about 300 bucks, but it's a great company. It's in the healthcare industry. It's not just taking care of people, but it's creating technology. It's creating technology, diagnostics, and things like that. There's another company I found there, but it's a pretty no name company. Who's making the technology, healthcare technology? As Clients get older and they need injectables. They have to take shots. They need the breathing machine. They need oxygen. Who's making the tubing? Who's making the machinery or whatnot, right? So this is the way you can find this out. But once you, you find a company you never heard of, most websites, they, they, every, public, every, every publicly traded company has an investor relations division. So you go to the investor relations division, you can look up, okay, the SEC filings, or you can look up their finances right off of the investor relations uh, website. So uh, like I just said, we have on um, infrastructure, we have Caterpillar, Caterpillar um, uh, for renewable energy. We have Solar Edge and we have Enphase. Enphase is the one that I love the most, E-N-P-H. And healthcare, you have Illuminaire, right? So when you look at all these particular companies, you have so many ways to uh, profit and, and invest, right? You can align yourself to get in front of what the president Biden presidency will look like in those particular sectors breaking down those stocks. So in this episode, quick recap, we talked about President Biden's belief and we talked about the three sectors that his beliefs kind of tie into. We talked about how does the president, um, how do they incentivize people to buy from companies, incentivize businesses. And then we looked at the sectors and inside those sectors, we looked at five things to look for in stocks. And then we, find, we found five individual stocks under President Biden's election that you can get in front of Please do your due diligence. This is not me telling you to buy anything. This is just me giving you my opinion in a way that I kind of look at things like that. I do not hold Caterpillar. I do not hold Solar Edge, and I do not hold Illuminaire at this time. I do own Enphase. I'm making sure I have the duty to disclose that. 
too. So I'm not trying to influence anybody to go out here and buy something that I already own to run the price up. So got way more interior than that. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to conclude today's episode. Make sure you hit that like, subscribe, comment, and share button. And let all your friends know, all your mom, where you could come back here and get the Prince of Investing. Catch us on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Subscribe on the podcast or wherever you're catching us. But anyway, my name is Prince Dykes. I'm the Prince of Investment. And to the next video, podcast, cartoon, or whatever else crazy you see me doing around the globe, peace, be safe, I'm out, and thank you.